วัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. It's getting really hot here in Vancouver, so time for another refreshing summer dessert. And of course, one of the most popular desserts in Thailand for when the weather is hot is what we call wun or aga aga jelly, which you guys seem to love very much. So the variation that I want to share with you today is what we call wun ga fe. Now wun is aga aga jelly, and ga fe is coffee. But it's more like a coffee and cream aga jelly. It's really good if you're an iced coffee fan. This one is for you. Let's get started. So there are two different parts to this dessert: the coffee part and the coconut cream part. So I'm going to make the coffee part first. I'm using, of course, Thai coffee. Now you don't have to use Thai coffee, but I think like the flavor is just more authentic if you can get it. It's darker and smokier, and the grains are just a little bit coarse, just like that. I'm just going to make coffee like I normally would Thai coffee. I'm going to add some hot water, hot off the boil water. I am going to use my coffee sock <laughs> here. This is like a classic Thai um, tool for making Thai tea, Thai coffee. It's just like a cloth bag with a little handle. You can use any kind of uh, coffee filter, or you can just add the coffee directly into the water and strain it out later if you want. So whatever, however, it's going to work for you. And then let that steep for about five minutes. So while that's going, I'm going to make the agar portion of it. So I've just got some plain water here in this pot, and I'm going to add some agar agar powder. So agar powder you can get at Asian grocery stores, Japanese stores also have it. They call it ganten. If you want to buy it online, I do have it listed in my kit. I'll put the link um, in the description box below. So I'm just going to sprinkle the agar powder into the water, and you want to make sure you do this when the water is cold. If it's hot. The powder is just going to clump up together, and I'm going to let this now come to a boil. I want to be stirring it quite frequently because otherwise the powder will settle to the bottom and sometimes kind of like gels up the bottom of your pot. So my agar solution has come to a full boil. I've turned it down slightly. Be careful; this boils over because the liquid is quite viscous at this point. So don't walk away. Definitely. Now you want to check that all the powder is dissolved. And I like to use a metal spoon, so I can take some in my spoon, pour it out, and then I look to see if I can see any grains still stuck to the spoon. And if you don't see anything, you're fine. So now, time to add the coffee. Now, one of the reasons why I like to dissolve the agar powder in um, water and not in coffee, like I could have just made a lot of coffee and boil it, but it's hard to see whether the powder has dissolved. So whenever I'm making agar, I always do the powder in clear water first before I start adding other things. Okay, and now some sugar, of course. And you can make this as sweet or as not sweet as you like. I also like to add just a pinch of salt, and I do this in my regular Thai coffee too. I just feel it cuts the sweetness nicely. Just going to bring this back to a simmer. It doesn't have to come back to a full boil to dissolve the sugar, and that's done. So now we're gonna make the cream layer. And while you're doing this, make sure you keep your coffee um, layer covered and warm. So put it on the stove at the lowest heat setting you can possibly go. Don't let it boil away. Or if you have a warming function on your stove, use that as well. Okay? You don't want that to set while you're making your other layer. So the process is very much the same. I've just got some water here. I'm gonna go in with agar agar powder. Which, by the way, is made from seaweed extract, so it is a suitable dessert for vegetarians. All right, so my agar powder is dissolved. I've checked; we're clear, literally. So now I'm going to add some coconut milk, Ooh, and you want to go use good coconut milk for this. Whenever you make desserts, the quality of your coconut milk matters so much more because there isn't a lot of. Other flavors involved. So if you want to know the one that I recommend, it is listed in my kit as well. I will put the link in the description below. You could just add all coconut milk if you want, but I really prefer a combination of coconut milk and evaporated milk because that's like the classic combination, right? In Thai coffee, we always add some evaporated milk or condensed milk, and I find that coconut milk alone it just doesn't quite work as well. Some sugar, of course. And a little bit of salt. This one, a little bit more. When you, whenever you're making um, coconut dessert, it always benefits from just a touch of saltiness. And I've got a simmer, and we are done. Time to assemble. 
This recipe, it's the perfect amount for an eight inch round pan. So it's two inches high, this one. You can put it in whatever kind of mold you like, little cups, little whatever. Silicone ones will make it easier to get out the jelly. But if you don't have silicone ones, I have devised a trick that works really well in getting it out. I'm gonna oil this pan just ever so slightly, like about a tiny bit of oil on this paper. You don't want excess oil in here because you pour the liquid in and it's like the oil, extra oil is gonna start floating into your jelly. Just a tiny little bit, just to create a more slick surface. Okay, I'm gonna start out with my coffee layer and I'm gonna do about a cup of liquid per layer but again depends on your patience you can do thick layers so it's less work for you you thin layers it's more work for you <laughs> it's kind of up to you i have to let this set obviously before i can pour the next layer in <coughs> want to keep that covered and hot but you don't want to let this completely cool and set solid before you pour the next layer in. It's so important. So many of you have tried, have had trouble with the layers not sticking together when you make my other agar jelly recipe. This is it right here. If you let the bottom layer set too cold, the likelihood of the top layer not sticking to it is high. So don't forget about it. It's just started to set and I want to show you. See, I'm going to press it on and it's... Ah! but it's still warm, it should still be a little bit elastic. I'm gonna pour the top layer on and the top layer should be hot, steaming hot, like you can see me right here. That's another thing that'll help the two layers stick together as well. And as you can see, I'm pouring it through a sieve because sometimes because there's milk involved, sometimes you'll get skin that forms and that is it. So you now let this set just a little bit before you pour the next layer on and so on and so forth. So in the beginning, it should maybe take five minutes to cool um, if you put a fan to it. But as it gets thicker, it'll take longer because there's more substance there. So it could take 10 up to 15 minutes before that layer sets. So it does take some time. Um, you, again, don't have to do as many layers as I'm doing. And if you do little ones, if you do little, like use little cups, they'll take no time to cool at all. So if you don't want to wait, you can make little ones. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for all day. It's all nice and chilled. Now to get this out, usually I have my little offset spatula that's really thin, but I forgot to bring it. So this is the second best thing. A thin spatula of some sort. I guess you have a thin butter knife that would work too. And I'm just gonna go around just to release it from the edge. One of the tricks that I like to do is before I attempt to flip this out, um, with this gap that I'm creating, I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. So I've just got some plain water using a brush and I'm just gonna drop a few drops of water along the sides. Just I find it helps it slide out a little easier. See, this would all not be a problem if you have a small mold and you just like flip it, use a little knife to just get it out or if you're using a silicone mold. Okay, so let's see how this works. Fingers crossed. I think I heard it go. Ta-da! Look how shiny that is. It looks so good. I don't even want to touch it. I don't want to do anything. It looks like something from a Marvel movie or something. Whee! There we go. And see, because we paid attention, the layers are sticking pretty well together. It's not falling apart when you cut it. There's something so satisfying about cutting agar jelly. It's like a weird feeling. Oh, look at that. Look how cool that looks. All you have to do is eat it now. One of the benefits of agar jelly is you don't need to keep it refrigerated all the time. I mean, it's nicer when it's cold, but if it's out in the sun, like this thing does not melt at room temperature. In fact, if you want to remelt it, you need to really put it on the stove to remelt it. So it's one of the perks of agar jelly. Ah. Mm. So refreshing. If you love 
a nice glass of iced coffee that's a little sweet, a little creamy. This is perfect. And that combination of coconut milk and evaporated milk creates just the perfect contrast with the coffee. Mm. Man, I could eat that all day. You know what would be really good as well? Is if you cut it into small cubes and then you add it into actual iced coffee and have it like bubble tea. That would be really good too. And the recipe as always will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, I definitely want to see a photo of it. So send it to me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I'm also on Pinterest for those of you who are pinners. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an awesome recipe like this. And click the little bell icon as well so you get a notification when I post a new video. If you love the show and you want to support us, check out our Patreon link in the description box below. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.